Welcome, everyone. I uh, appreciate your, your patience this morning with uh, trying to get our information. We, we know that uh, everyone's dealing with a tragic loss in our community here today, and uh, we wanted to uh, get our information out to you in a timely manner as we could. Um, with our joint response that we have here, uh, we'd really appreciate it this morning if you could, uh, if you have a question specific to our partners with the Halifax Regional Fire Services, if you could indicate that so we know who it is that you'd like to answer the question or if it's specific to uh, the police, if you could indicate that as well so that I can answer those questions for you. And we'll try and answer what questions we can for you here today. Uh, we're going to start off uh, just with a, a brief statement from uh, Deputy Chief uh, Dave Meldrum from our uh, from the uh, fire services, but before we do, we're just going to introduce who we have here uh, in the room. Uh, oh, uh, first, we have our uh, inspector here, Dean Simmons, from our central division uh, with us here today as well. We have uh, Deputy Chief uh, from Halifax Regional Fire Services, uh, uh, Dave Meldrum, and at our side, we have uh, Peter Anders from again from Halifax Regional Fire Service and Deputy Chief as well. Uh, we also have our City Councilors here for um, for support here this morning with us. Thank you for for coming in with us this morning. Oh, I'll leave it to you, Dave, if you want to. Thank you very much, Stephen. Thank you, everyone, for coming out on a very difficult and sad day. We want to start by conveying our deepest condolences for the losses suffered in today's devastating early morning fire on Quartz Drive in Halifax. At approximately 12.41 a.m., we received multiple calls for a house on fire. Upon arrival, our firefighters encountered heavy fire on the first and second floors of the home. They immediately took hose lines into the house, but they encountered very heavy and dangerous fire conditions. Once this fire was contained, sadly, our firefighters discovered multiple fatalities in the home. I can also tell you that a man and a woman have been transported to hospital with injuries. Other first responders, including police and emergency health services, were also on scene. At this time, Halifax Regional Fire and Emergency are conducting an investigation into what caused this fire. The medical examiner for the province of Nova Scotia is also conducting an investigation. Our thoughts today are with the family and the community here during this terrible and difficult day. I'll take your questions. Can you, um, some neighbors told us earlier today that they heard an explosion before the fire erupted. What can you tell us about that? Was there some type of explosion that happened at the home? No, I certainly uh, wouldn't have that information. Our firefighters can only know what happened once they arrived, but any information like that would form part of the fire investigation, which is underway now. Um, the weather was cold this morning. Did that play any role in how quickly firefighters were able to put out the fire? Or were there any concerns to that end? Um, no, absolutely not. The fire attack was very efficient, very quick. I can tell you that in this type of weather, firefighting is difficult and it's often very uncomfortable for our crews. But they work hard and they expect uh, you know to work through all conditions. Do you know how long it took for the fire to become contained? Uh, it took less than an hour for us to get that fire knocked down. Do you know if there's a fire line? I do not know that. Um, in relation to the cause, I know it's still early, but are you looking at a barbecue as a cause? I, or can you say where the fire started? It looks like the back of the home, is that correct? It would be completely inappropriate to speculate at this time on anything to do with the fire investigation. As soon as we have that information, though, we will release it. How are firefighters doing? Um, this, I mean, seven children, this must be extremely difficult for first responders. It is. It's very difficult. Uh, firefighters trained to help and make a difference, and we believe that they did so uh, this morning. Nonetheless, a loss of life is very, very hard. I can tell you that all our firefighters have been debriefed by our critical incident stress management team, and we're going to make sure that we support our team all through this journey. Can you tell us what the fire code is for the number of smoke detectors in a house this uh, Typically in this community, there must be at least one working smoke alarm on every level where there's a bedroom. I don't have that information, but I can get it for you. Just some word on uh, father running back into the, uh, the structure, something like that. Can you confirm that? Was, was did the father attempt to get back into the home on a few occasions? No, I don't have that information. But then again, accounts of what happened at that scene will form part of the fire investigation. What do you know about this house, um, <coughs> starting with how old it is, how many bedrooms it had, uh, anything else you can tell? 
I won't be able to discuss really the nature of the building or the, the condition of the property or any other uh, elements like that. Once again, we're going to give our fire investigators the time and the space they need to do their work. Where were the victims found in the home? I can't give you that information today. In fact, I don't have it. Have you made any progress in terms of uh, identifying the victims? Uh, absolutely not. Fire services uh, never is involved in identity of, of victims. And you mentioned um, that a man and a woman were taken to hospital. Can you confirm that they were uh, the parents of their children in the home? I cannot. I have no information about the nature of the family relationship of the occupants of the building. Do you know, um, I, I know it's sort of an open ended question, but about how long do you think it may take for fire investigators to nail down a cause? Like, is that something you expect in the coming days or would it take weeks? It can take a prolonged period of time, depending. Uh, I've seen fire investigations that can be concluded in days. Others take weeks or months. So for example, if evidence needed to be sent to a lab, some of the labs that we use are outside of the province of Nova Scotia. And if that were to be the case, then the investigation could take a prolonged period of time. Um, seven victims seems like a, a, obviously a high number of victims. Is this the largest, um, I don't know how to word it, but is this the most uh, fatalities you've had in a single house fire in the Halifax area? I would certainly say it's the largest loss that we have in our memory. I think Chief Andrews would would support <coughs> that. So, other than the fact that this is a huge tragedy, I mean, was there something other than you, unusual about trying to fight this? What challenges that unusual challenges that you had to face in order to extinguish <coughs> the fire to get the people out? Uh, I know from the firefighters were faced with a lot of heavy fire that they had to work through and multiple hose lines were needed to control the fire. But beyond that, the conditions of fire behavior once again will be part of the investigation process. So you can't say whether it's with electrical fire or something? Uh, absolutely, I cannot. Okay. How unusual is it for a newly <coughs> constructed home like this or a kids about five or six years old for it to be so completely consumed by fire so quickly? I can't speak about this fire. Certainly I, I can say that new homes are built with lightweight construction and once fire barriers are penetrated, rapid fire spread is possible in newer construction. Can you confirm for us whether that home was uh, supplied with natural gas? I do not know that. Can you tell us what they used to heat the house? I cannot. Do you know if they had a barbecue? I do not. Do you know how long they were? I do not. I'm sorry, folks. It's very early, as you can tell. There's a lot going on here in our city today with this tragedy. Uh, these details will form part of the fire investigation, I assure you. On that uh, topic, could you give us a few more details about the investigation, how it will progress, what are the stages, uh, any details you could provide with you? What I can say is general in nature as regards fire investigation as a method fire departments use. So fire investigators are specially trained to look at a scene and first eliminate possible sources of that fire. They strive to locate the origin where the fire may have started and if they can do so then they will start to look for the actual source of ignition in that fire. It's a painstaking process that often involves hours or days of moving fire debris and objects around and searching for evidence that sometimes can be very, very small. If there's evidence of suspicion, our fire investigators will immediately collaborate with Halifax Regional Police. Uh, if not, if it's not a, a suspicious origin, then our department will retain the investigation. Is there any evidence of, at this point that this fire could be suspicious? But there's no evidence that I'm aware of at this time. Thank you. Um, is anyone from police speaking as well? Or? Yeah, I was just waiting Perfect. to see if you had any spe specific Perfect. questions. Thank Thank you. You. Um, I guess, could you just start off with um, how, are fire or how are police doing? Obviously, they were there on scene as well this morning. This is quite difficult, I imagine. Again, our, our officers have been uh, debriefed uh, through the crit critical incidents as well. Uh, with any kind of tragedy like this, we, we gather together as a, as a family to, to look after each other and, again, also to, to reach out to the family to let them know that we're, we're thinking about them. Um, can you confirm the ages of the seven children? We're hearing they were as young as three months and as old as 17, but just want to get some confirmation on that. Yeah, we're not speaking to the specifics of the, the ages of the family, especially out of respect for them and their privacy today. Uh, that information as well, we're waiting from the medical examiner's offices for information to come from them as well to, to determine some of those specifics. What can you tell us about the family that was in that house? Well, honestly, we don't have a lot of specifics from the, about the family itself, other than we do know that, like I say, it was a single family residence that was there, and that seven residents from believed to be from that residence were, were killed in this tragic incident. Thank you. 
Um, I know you're not releasing the ages. Are you able to confirm the names of the victims? No, we're not releasing those specifics to uh, respect for the family and, and for their privacy today so that they can have an opportunity to, to take the time that they need to do to grieve. How is the, the man that was taken to hospital in the initial release that he suffered life threatening injuries? Um, how is he doing? We don't have the specific health information of, of, of the, either the man or the woman that have been taken to hospital. Do you know if he's expected to survive? Again, those are specific health, um, pri private health information, and we don't have the specifics of those. We do, we do have uh, officers on scene with, with the members of the family who, uh, who are at the hospital. But again, we, to the specifics, we, we're not releasing any of that information at the moment. Can you update the condition of the two adults who were in the hospital? Again, we, we don't have the, the specifics of that uh, private health care information for the, for the folks that are in there. We do know, I say, that the, the man was taken with uh, life-threatening injuries and, and the woman was taken for ones that are not believed to be life-threatening at this time. Where does your investigation go now? Again, we work collaboratively with, with FIRE, uh, with our investigators as well, uh, to help them with their investigation to see what we can do. Again, we rely uh, and work collaboratively with them on for their expertise in these, because they are very unique investigations. Uh, and like I say, we work collaboratively with them to see where this is to determine or look for cause and, and those particular pieces of information. Are you guys asking for help from the public at all? Not at this time. Um, and there's no indication of suspicious from a police point of view. Again, we we're not speaking to the specifics of, of exactly what happened in there. This will come through the fire investigation and with our investigators to determine exactly what the cause was. We don't have anything specifically leading us to think it is suspicious at this time, but again, our, our, until we have a, a thorough ruling and a full investigation, we won't make any determination. Have you been able to speak with the man and woman who are in uh, initially, uh, from when they were taken to by ambulance, but since then we we haven't really had an opportunity to speak with them, especially given the circumstances, and give them opportunity to uh, to get the care that they need. Can you speak uh, to where the, the victims of the fire were located in the structure? Were they together? Were they in separate rooms? We don't have any of that information at the moment as to, as in regards to that. Again, that will come out from the the fire investigation as well. The the specifics of that. So can you confirm or deny that this family uh, is uh, a family of immigrants that have only been in Canada for a, a very small number of years? I don't have any specifics as to the regards to, to the history of the family at this point. When do we anticipate the next update will come? Most likely the next update will come once we start to determine some specifics of the fire, and in particular uh, the, where the source was and if it was suspicious or any of those kind of things in nature. Um, again, that when that will come and really is undetermined. It will depend on the investigation itself and, and where it leads us. And again, but once we do have that information, we'll certainly bring it forward to, so that you guys are, have that information and keep you updated when we have it. We're not asking you that you can add to shed some more light on this? Because it seems like there's a lot of still unanswered questions. Is it just because it's so early? Well, I mean, that's just it. it. It really is early in the investigation for us to speculate on on any of that type of information as far as um, the specifics of the fire, the nature of the cause. I mean, really what's important here is that we know that the community has gone through you know, a really tragic uh, circumstances today. Yeah, we, we know that both the family, the community have gone through really tragic circumstances today and that really is our focus on making sure that you know we can uh, go forward from there. Again, we will conduct our investigation as, as need be for sure uh, and we will do that but again, we, you know, our thoughts are going out to the community right now and having gone through this. Yes, you can't say anything with the parents trying and attempting to get back into the house and, and get the children out I mean, just because people are going to be wondering mm -hmm. if the children are dead parents survive, right? So I'm just curious. Certainly we can understand where, where people would be wondering those particular details, but again, that's the information that will come out through the through the investigation, and we just don't have that, that information right now, and it really would be inappropriate for us to speculate on, on what happened without having that, that information. Um, when do you think autopsies will be done? Would they, like, is that part of your, would that form part of your investigation? I, that information all will come in with the medical examiner's office, but I don't have uh, the specifics as to, you know, when those would be conducted. You'd have to speak with the, the medical examiner's offices in regards to that particular information. Okay. Great. Uh, Mr. Mancini, do you have a moment to talk to us in front of the mic? Sure. Please. Thank you very much.
Thank you. Mr. Mancini, uh, obviously a very tragic day. What can you tell us about what you know about what happened last night? Not much more than you've already heard by, from uh, fire and police. Uh, fire reached out to us uh, very early in the morning. I'm here with uh, Councillor Adams, who's the councillor in the area. Uh, I'd just like to state that, you know, our hearts and our prayers, our thoughts are with the family, uh, with the community. As Councillor Adams will tell you, it's a very uh, unique community, a very diverse community. and. And uh, the whole community, you know, I think all the whole municipality is now feeling the pain. And most of us in this room are, are, are parents and uh, can't imagine what's going on. So we also, have our thoughts are with our first responders, too. You know, our firefighters uh, and our police officers and EHS to be on the scene. Uh, this is a very, very difficult day for our municipality. So we ask that you allow the investigation to take place. I know you're eager for more information. So are our citizens. But we have to let the uh, our professionals do their work and then as that information becomes available that will be shared with you. Yeah, right now we're just allowing it's, it's still only been hours really and you're thinking about it the municipality is here to support our for our first responders and the community and so we're uh, I was in contact uh, both Councillor Adams and I were in contact with the mayor who's out of the country on several uh, times throughout the day and he passes on uh, his condolences to the family also but uh, we're there for for support uh, as needed we'll wait till uh, the community reaches out or our, our emergency services folks reach out to us Oh, Shnap, yeah. Has anyone from the municipality been in contact with the Syrian community? Uh, not as of yet. Uh, I mean, we have to wait to, although all those details haven't come out yet, so we're waiting. We're on standby uh, for those conversations if needed. Have you spoken to anybody at I ISENS? Uh, we have reached out to ISENS, and uh, our staff have, and uh, I haven't heard back from that report yet. Mr. Adams, do you have a Sure. Thank you very much. Okay. This is a your community, tell us how you're feeling and how uh, your constituents are feeling about what I guess sick would uh, sum it up. Uh, it's a horrible tragedy. Uh, I know the community's reeling, but um, I know that uh, they're there for anyone who needs help. I'm, I've been in contact with a number of residents, and they, uh, they're, they're, they want to do something. We don't know what yet, uh, but uh, that'll come, as, as you've heard from fire and police and from deputy mayor, once the investigation uh, it gets a little more information and we see where we are then that'll be our chance to to step forward <clears throat> you were familiar with them you know, right? no no um, from my information I can tell you they were a, a Syrian family I moved to the to that uh, to governor's Brook in uh, in the summer and I believe they were from outside uh, of the city proper they had lived uh, just outside of HRM uh, previous to that do you know anything about the they're, they're practically brand new. Um, a lot of the homes have been built in the last uh, two to five years. Um, the community is almost fully built out, so the, the homes are, are are quite new, relatively speaking. Have you inquired about whether the homes had a uh, fire alarm or any sort? I that's that's a something for the for the investigation. Um, you mentioned that whole area is new. Uh, I was talking to some people earlier that were a little bit concerned that a new home would um, go up in flames that quick. Are you hearing that from the community? Is there any concern about like, around construction or anything? That whole area is just a couple of years old, right? Yeah, it is. It's a few years old. And uh, I'm not, uh, I don't fully understand fire. Um, but again, that, that will come out in the investigation. Is there any, um, any events or anything you've heard of so far that are happening to support the family or the Syrian community in your area? No, again, because it's in the preliminary stages, we don't know who needs what. Uh, and, and as mentioned earlier, um, support for the first responders is in place should they need it. We just need to know who we can help and how we can help them, and, and we won't know that for, for uh, some time to come. Uh, here in the Halifax Regional Municipality, uh, our fire department investigates all structure fires. Uh, we have that authority uh, from the Provincial Fire Marshal's Office. We are communicating with the Provincial Fire Marshal's Office and keeping them fully apprised of the circumstances here. So what role does the fire marshal play in this 
in an investigation like this, the fire marshal will review our findings and make sure that we make sufficient reports to them uh, for the needs of monitoring fire safety in the province of Nova Scotia. Okay. Thank you very much.